All right, let's jump right in. Today, we're talking about a huge shakeup in a corner of computer science that honestly runs our modern world. I'm talking about the tech behind your GPS, the internet, you name it. For more than 60 years, a single algorithm has been the undisputed champion for finding the shortest path. But now, well, a new paper says they finally, finally broken that speed limit. So here's how we're gonna break it down. First, we'll get a grip on the core problem we're trying to solve. Then we'll meet the reigning champ, Dijkstra's algorithm. After that, we'll see how it was just beaten and dig into the super clever trick that made it possible. And finally, we'll wrap up with why this is such a big deal for, well, all of us. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Section one, the foundational problem. And believe me, at the heart of all this is a question you deal with constantly, probably without even realizing it. Think about it. What is the fastest route from one point to everywhere else? Every single time you pop open a map on your phone, you're asking a massive network to solve this exact problem. Find the best way to get from where you are to, well, anywhere. But it's not just about getting around town. This is one of the most fundamental challenges in all of computer science. The official name for this is the single source shortest path problem. You'll see it called SSSP. Now, don't let the term scare you. A graph is just a fancy word for a network. And the vertices, those are just the points in the network. So SSSP is all about finding the shortest route from one starting point, the source, to every other point. And shortest could mean a lot of things, right? It could be distance, sure, but it could also be time or even cost. It's really about finding the most efficient path from point A to, you know, the whole shebang. All right, so for over half a century, one name has absolutely dominated the answer to this question. It's time to meet the reigning undisputed champion, Dijkstra. So Dijkstra's algorithm goes way back to 1959. It was just elegant, brilliant. Over the decades, people tweaked it, optimized it, and it became the absolute gold standard. I mean, people even proved that it was the fastest possible way to solve the problem. But there was a catch, a big one. It was only the fastest if, and this is key, if you absolutely needed a perfectly sorted list of every destination, ordered by distance. So how does it work? Well, the logic is actually super intuitive. Imagine you're exploring a city. You start at your hotel, right? You look at all the streets connected directly to you. Dijkstra says, always, always go to the absolute closest intersection first. Then, from that new spot, you look at the new streets you can see, add them to your list, and you do it again. Pick the absolute closest one from your entire list. By being so careful, so methodical, it guarantees you won't miss a shortcut by accidentally taking a longer path first. It's cautious, but it's reliable. And right there, that's the dilemma. That's the paradox of Dijkstra. Its greatest strength, that guarantee that it's always right, is also its fatal flaw. See, to make that promise, it has to keep this perfectly sorted priority list of every possible next step. And constantly resorting that list over and over, that's the bottleneck, that's the sorting barrier. It's a fundamental speed limit that for 60 years, everyone thought was just unbreakable. So this brings us to a huge what if. What if you don't actually need that perfectly sorted list? What if all you care about are the final distances? Asking that simple question is what led to this incredible paper. A paper that basically challenges a 60-year-old assumption. And here it is, the central claim from the paper, stated so simply, it's almost shocking. After decades of being the textbook answer, they're saying, Dijkstra's algorithm is not optimal for SSSP. Just wow. It means there's a faster way. So what exactly did they build? Well, it's the very first deterministic algorithm to beat Dijkstra's time. And deterministic just means it's not guessing. It gets the correct answer every single time. Now, it works on a specific but really common type of network, what we call sparse directed graphs. Directed is easy. It just means traffic can go one way, like on a one-way street. And sparse, that just means most things aren't connected to everything else. You know, like a real roadmap or the internet. Okay, check out this chart because it really shows you the difference. Don't worry too much about the crazy looking formulas. Here's all you need to know. The top bar is Dijkstra. The bottom one is the new algorithm. 
As the network you're searching gets bigger and bigger, think millions of nodes, like on the internet, Dijkstra's runtime just gets slower and slower. But look at the new one. It's just better. That little exponent, that two-thirds, makes a huge difference. It scales way more efficiently. For massive networks, this isn't just a small speed up. It's a total game changer. All right, so the big question is, how do they do it? How did they crack a problem that's been stumping people for decades? The secret, and this is what's so cool, isn't some brand new out of the box invention. Nope. It's a super clever mashup of two old rivals. So let's look at the toolkit they used. On one side, you have Dijkstra's algorithm. It's meticulous, it's comprehensive, it explores patiently, but gets bogged down by having to sort everything. On the other side, you've got an algorithm like Bellman Ford. It's fast, it's focused, it's really good at just sprinting a few steps ahead to see what's there without needing a perfect map. The problem is, it's not great over long distances. One is slow and steady, the other is fast but short-sighted. And this, this is the big idea, the aha moment. The insight is, don't sort everything. It's a waste of time. Instead, let's just find the really important intersections up ahead. Let's call them pivots and focus all our hard work there. So here's how the hybrid strategy actually works. Step one, you identify your current frontier of places to explore. Step two, you send out fast Bellman Ford style scouts to peek just a few steps ahead into the fog of war. Step three, these scouts report back, not with a full map, but just with the locations of a few strategic pivots. And here's the magic, step four. The algorithm then tells the main Dijkstra style search, okay, for now, ignore everything else. Just focus on finding the best paths between these pivots. It shrinks the problem down, avoiding that massive sorting task. It's genius. Okay, so this is all really cool, but let's talk about why this breakthrough actually matters. Why is this more than just a faster route on a map? When you step back, the takeaways are huge. First, it completely challenges old assumptions. It proves that a 60-year-old algorithm, something everyone thought was optimal, could actually be beaten. Second, it's a massive win for theoretical computer science. This is a big deal in the world of algorithm design. Third, and this could be huge, this new frontier reduction trick, it might be the key to speeding up a whole bunch of other complex problems. And finally, it's just a great story about human ingenuity. It shows we're still finding smarter ways to solve really fundamental problems. You know, for more than half a century, this problem was basically considered solved, done, closed book. And we now know it wasn't. It just makes you wonder, right? What other impossible problems are we living with? What other fundamental truths are just sitting there waiting for someone to come along with one new clever idea?